Hi everyone and thanks for joining me today. In this video I'm going to do my monthly sew and chat. Not a lot of sewing in this one. Before I forget um, to mention, don't forget to like and subscribe and share please because it all adds to the figures. My subscriber number is going up at the same rate it's been doing for the past year, so there's nothing new there. Um, before I go further again, um, I want to say thank you to the person that um, did a PayPal deposit for me the other day, one of the viewers. Um, I was able to use that, that money as the first in a four payments on Afterpay for a new cutting mat which is actually arrived you know, the same week um, which is this one nice and new I haven't even I haven't cut anything on it yet my old ones just sitting there on the other table that can just probably end up being used for craft things what I should do is put it over on my I can swing the camera around put it over on my sewing board to protect it because the cat tends to sleep on it but at the end of the day the clothes brush gets the hair off it and yeah she likes it so I'll just leave it as is so thank you for that um, money it um these cutting mats used to be my old one when I bought it probably four years ago was a hundred dollars. I got it on special for like ninety or something. This one that I've now got, this brand new one, um different brand seems to hopefully will work the same. Either way it's gotta work out awful lot better than the old one because it was barely able to cut anything on um, $31 including postage so that's you know the the price of these mats has dropped dramatically it's probably the only thing I can tell you that's actually dropped in price over the past few years everything else has gone through the roof so I've got a new cutting mat I don't actually have any fabric to or cardboard to cut on it at the moment I went the other day to, I was going to get some fabric. I had to have a blood test because the hospitals requested it. So I went and had the blood test at my doctor's. Then I had to go to the post office to post back a textbook that I'd got through the university library. I then went to my friend's house because I'd picked up some cat food for her when I did my shopping the day before. And by the time I'd done all that, the last thing I wanted to do was have to get in and out of the car again to go to the fabric shop. So I'll do that either this week or the following week to get some, I want to get two metres of this turquoise fabric for the borders for the next quilt. I've got a couple of hundred hexagons covered in this turquoise fabric. But I don't want to use them in case the new fabric I get is a slightly different shade. So I'll get that, you know, when I haven't already had to get out and in and out the car half a dozen times before going there. Which brings me to my next topic, which is my hip. As I said last month, I've got... I saw the surgeon, he put me down on a level 2 urgency to have it done. I got a phone call week before last and I'm booked in to have the hip replacement on the 17th of May which is an awful lot quicker than I'd been expecting and the hospital has got all the paperwork and they've sent me some stuff because I have to see the occupational therapist before surgery so they've sent me paperwork for that and it's also a whole booklet on what you can and can't do once you've had the hip replacement because the 
the main the main problem with a hip that you don't have with a knee is a hip tends to I won't say have a tendency but the possibility of it popping out so things like bending and lots of different things you know can affect that I've got to put on this form of measurements of you know how high my bed is how high my chairs are that I sit in the height of the toilet seat the height of the lip to get into the shower I mean I don't actually have I've got a shower but it's a shower over the bath which I'm not going to tell them it is I'm just going to tell them it's a normal shower with like a two inch lip or something where the door is um, I'm not going to use the shower over the bath I mean my friends offered to pick me up and take me to her place um, and use their shower but I'm going to get one of those handheld things that you use they advertise them for pet washing I've had them before and um sorry <coughs> just you know wash my hair over the laundry tub and wash the rest of me you know probably at the same spot really um and do it that way I'm not even going to consider getting in and out the bath you know to use the shower I've got but I'm not telling you know the occupational therapist that um there's my friends sort sorting out for me to borrow a over the toilet seat that they sold to somebody else whose mother has since died so I should be able to borrow that um, I've got one of those frames so you can lower yourself to the toilet but that's extremely painful now and I don't want to run the risk of doing further injury um, once the surgery has been done so I'll have that and as far as seats for sitting in all the chairs I've got are the same height I don't I use a recliner but I know it's too low for, for um, using once my hip's been done until at least the first you know, four to six weeks. Um, all my chairs are the same height and if they say they're too low then I've got one of those wheelie walkers and the seat on that's um, higher than my normal chairs and you've got the arms to push yourself up and down so I'll just use that if need be. Um, my hips got to the point now where every time I move in bed it wakes me up so and walking's just almost impossible at the moment I should try and lose a bit of weight before surgery but we'll just see how we go but um, 17th of May so that's just over six weeks time it works out well because I've got exams on the 1st and 2nd of June so I should be, you know, I won't say recovered enough, but it shouldn't be a problem doing the exams. I do have one study problem, and that is my, I'm doing two law subjects. Criminal law, which I've done everything that needs to be done other than the exam, so I've just got lectures and tutorials between now and and then for that so that's not a problem the other subject it's called law and context and it's unbelievably theoretical i'm struggling to understand any of it i've got an assignment due in three weeks and i don't even understand the question let alone what the answer should be so that's going to take a a bit of effort i actually question the lecturer the other day as to why we're doing such a theoretical subject so early on and he said it's because it makes you get in the mode of thinking like a lawyer and I thought I'm having enough trouble thinking like a non-lawyer let alone adding all things like you know the thin and thick rule of law and liberalism and how that reacts with law and lots of other topics like equality and gender and and things like that so I need to concentrate on that that subject a lot more than the criminal law the 
Law and Context has three quizzes and the assignment. The assignment's due in three weeks, so I'm not worried about getting that done. You know, whether it's good or bad, it'll get done. I'll probably get it done next week. The three quizzes, I've already done one. They're five marks each out of the total 100 marks. The first one, I got four out of five. The next one is in three weeks' time, so that's not a problem. But the final one is actually the day after surgery. And it's open from that day, which is a Wednesday, until midnight on the Sunday. Now, I'm just hoping that the hospital has decent internet so I can get that quiz done while I'm in hospital. So I'll be taking my laptop and all my notes for that subject. But if they don't have reliable internet, then... I hope to be home by before the Sunday night. I would hope to be home by the Saturday. And then I can just do that quiz once I'm home. So I'll just have to wait till I go to hospital to see how that goes. Just finished sewing that block in. I'm just removing the last of the hexagons that are in that section. So studies the criminal law is all under control just have the exam this law in context is as i said it's an absolute nightmare so i really need to spend a fair amount of time on that over the next few weeks but hopefully i'll get through it it um, just means i have to spend less time reading and quilting and wasting time and seeing as I don't have anything else to do other than study, there's no reason I shouldn't be able to make myself, you know, put the effort in. My ancient history is, is, um, it has three assignments. It's on ancient Egyptian and Near Eastern archaeology and it's quite interesting. It has three assignments. The first one I finished yesterday and submitted. It was just a very short 500 words on... You have to pick a, from a range of rooms in the... or galleries in the British Museum that have virtual tour, tours and do a critical analysis of that. And I did that on the... Egyptian Sculpture Gallery, which I've actually visited when I went to London. So I had a bit of very little, you know, a first-hand knowledge of that, you know, museum space. So that was only 500 words, just a analysis. But what put this tutor, I've never had it done before is you have there's a marking criteria that you know how much you've actually how well it's written how well you've analyzed things everything else and for this subject the coordinators having you actually copy and paste that with your assignment and highlight what you think you should get for it it's like you know mark your own assignment and then see how their marks come up against your own which it's not something I'm, I've ever done before, so that was interesting. I just put, you know, the level that would get me a credit, not a distinction. But, I mean, I think I've answered the question. It depends how well I'll find out at the end of April. There's another two, and they're blogs, which I'd never done a blog till my first ancient history subject last year. But they're not to be published blogs which is different. The first one is words only. It's only 800 words and it's to do with the returning of artifacts to, or a specific artifact to Greece. The artifacts turned up for sale at Sotheby's or Sotheby's and the Egyptian government wants it back under some law that they've enacted 
So I'll do some research, get that one done, and the final one's a blog which I think might need pictures. So I'll think about that when I actually go to look at the question, which I haven't bothered to do yet. So, you know, the three assignments for that subject, no exam, so I'm not I'm not worried about that one at all. I, depends what grade I'll get, but I've got no no doubts that I'll pass that one. And in case you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm taking the papers out, and those that are too damaged to do use again, I'm putting in one pile. And the ones that I can use again, which are these ones I'm just popping here on the fabric, they go into a different container. And when I count up the hexagons that I've removed, as I do when I think I've got a hundred, then those ones will go with other hexagons I've got for reusing. So... It's got a knot in it somewhere, that's why that's not pulling out. So that's my studies, you know, all up to date, still enjoying it. Had a um, two hour tutorial for criminal law on manslaughter this morning, which was really interesting. So as long as it stays interesting, I'll be quite happy to keep Continuing, I know some subjects down the track aren't going to be interesting, like constitutional law and um, administrative law. At, at the moment, the topics tend to have like yeah, you know, twenty to thirty PowerPoint pages each that go along with the lectures, and I tend to. I don't tend to, I describe them all, I handwrite them all. And I think that's how I remember a lot of it. But I found out the other night in the tutorial that some subjects have a you know, hundred PowerPoints, which means that there's no way I'm going to be able to write all those out. So we'll just have to see what my learning strategy is for when I get to those. But for now I'm doing okay. Okay, so that is the final block so all these that's all the bits of threads that have come out of taking out those hexagons if I have a look at this I don't think there's enough to do another hundred there's only a few I put them aside but what I do is I tip them out so I've got a pile of hexagons I'll add those ones I've just done and then what I do is I count them, which actually doesn't take long at all. It takes longer if I'm stand, sitting here talking and, and counting. But um, I think there's a cat in here. Both my cats are still doing fine. Clancy's still got his still looks like he's on death's door but he seems to be doing all right he's um he's managing he's eating like a horse which makes me think he may have thyroid problem but you know there's not much i can do about that it um yeah he's got too many other issues wrong with him to I won't say to waste money on the thyroid, but it's just not going to be viable to put him on long-term, really expensive treatment. So that's 50 I've just put in there, and I know there's not 50 here. So I'm not going to bother to assume I've got 100. My tally sheet is now up to 8,200. That can go in there with that. And with those, these ones that will get used again, I'll just put them on the other side. That pin cushion, the unpicker and the thread are all going into this container. 
and this container is going aside because that's for this quilt. That card with the tallies is for underwater quilt number one which is what this is and I've got another pin cushion, the blue thread and an unpicker and a new card in another container that will be for quilt number two which I actually have started with the first block of so that will um that will get started I've just just doing a sky block out of row nine with a couple of birds in it I'm not doing row 10 because I need the border and I'm starting at block number two in that row because row one has the border down the side so I'm doing this one which I'll probably sew with another block in the next video or one of the videos in the near future the that's number two three and four is going to have a boat in it then there'll probably be another couple of blocks that are just sky or sky and birds then I'll do another boat this one I've just sewn in was the last block for row three so I'm just going to lay this out and you've all seen this before the first part of this this is uh, what I just did was I think it's block nine or something which if I that's a turtle probably should bring it all in a bit closer that's a purple fish a purple fish a little stingray the black and white one which I'm not sure if you can see that properly or not black and white stingray and that's a big grey stingray so it's not very clear all the way out to the all the way out to the cliff on the side so row three that bit of cliff up the top is block 13 in row four I can do block 12 for that row as soon as I get the brown because it doesn't have any C because this um, block 11 has got four rows of brown and then it'll be the C so I can't do that till I've got the fabric for the C so I can do block 12 for number four five six and seven when I got the brown fabric which I'll get after I get this turquoise or the turquoise for the new one so we'll just go through go along this so from the cliff I've got stingray, seahorse, fish, 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 a couple of stingrays, fish, these are probably not very clear but the blue and the multicoloured are turtles on their side. Anyone that looked at it would think what the hell are those but I know they're turtles so that's all right. Two more seahorses that are facing that direction, as is this one. So the next time I do seahorses in the sea, they're going to, I'm going to mix up the directions they're looking at. Big turtle, more fish, stingray behind the seaweed, another fish, seaweed, fish, fish, turtle that you probably can't see at all, seaweed need to get a lot more greens for seaweed there's a another seahorse fish this one's all fish three fish in that top block couple of fish seaweed and the 
edge. Coming down here, there's fish. Oh, that's a seahorse facing the other way. At least I got one of them in on this this bit. Seahorse. All the bottom here is just seaweed. We come along. We got fish behind the seaweed. Another fish and a couple more of those angled fish and part of a third fish in that block and the rest of that fish will be in the next row and I've kept the rest of that um, polka dot fabric for that and then we're back at the border again so that's rows one two three I've done nine and ten over 8,000 hexagons removed and if I add in the hexagons that are all around the border we're coming up okay there's two problems they should be joined and for some reason they're not that doesn't look like it's ever been sewn in same with that so I don't know what happened there I'll get needle and thread out well oh, that one's come undone I think that's the one where I had to add bits. So I've got three little seams that need to be re-sewn. So regardless of how many times I do this, you'll always get mistakes. So I'll do them next time I come in here. But for now, that's pretty much it for this quilt. Until I fix those mistakes. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was YouTube and money and since qualifying to earn money from my videos that was from the 1st of February I have to have earned a hundred dollars before I get a payout the following month so in February I earned $51 and in March I've earned 60 so that takes it to $111 which is over the threshold I've already verified my home address verified my bank account gone through all their you know hoops as far as qualifying so they haven't updated on Google AdSense yet but basically I should get a payment of $111 between the 21st and the 26th of April. It will probably take me another two to three months to qualify for the next $100. So it isn't a case of once you've qualified once, it's automatic, that whatever you earn the next month, you will get paid you know, the following month. It does have to be $100. So I'm not about to you know, make a fortune off, off YouTube. You know, a hundred dollars. That money's going to go towards a new pair of um, shoes, new pair of runners. Because the pair I've got, I normally buy a pair a year. These ones have been, I've had them over two years, and they literally are falling apart. So I will get a new pair of those. Any extra money, I will get. I will use probably to towards textbooks for next term you know, get them on um, after pay I need to I've got my birthday at the end of this month my friends giving me the money so I can buy a microwave oven which I haven't got and I haven't had one for a couple of years so I'll get a cheap one of those and any other money birthday money or money I need to get things like a dressing gown and t-shirts and new underwear for hospital because I'm not bothering with pajamas I'll just wear shorts shorts and t-shirt but I don't have any t-shirts I wear singlets or vests and that's not quite suitable for hospital so I'll get I'll go to Kmart and I'll get some um, get a microwave get some t-shirts get some underwear and a dressing gown I've got slippers so and it'll be the only time I'll wear a dressing gown and the last dressing gown the only time I wore it was when I was in hospital having my knee done 
So that will be my birthday money paying for hospital things. I've um I'll take I'll get a new set of headphones for, at the hospital because the ones I use for my tutorials and things are only cover one ear. So I want a pair that'll cover both ears. So while I'm in hospital, I'm going to take hexagons and fabric and cover hexagons and also watch shows that I've got on my laptop that I've already downloaded like several seasons of or nearly all the seasons of Law and Order SVU so I've got you know 10 or 12 seasons of those that I haven't watched I can watch some of those in hospital I can listen to my lectures in hospital if the internet's not good um, but I need you know headphones that cover both ears so that's trip to Kmart at the end of this month to spend my birthday money and get what I need I will carry on get some fabric for the next quilt carry on doing work on that second underwater quilt this one's going to get put aside now for it could be months it could be six months before I come back to this but it will get finished but as I've said before I'm going to get the fabric for the sea for both quilts at the one time and that's going to take some money so in the meantime I'll get fabric for lots more fish and seahorses and turtles for the borders for the sea for the sky and the sand for the next quilt and once I've got all of that then I'll get the fabric for the sea. I'm hoping at some stage this year to get my big green quilt actually quilted. Might not be able to, that's going to take maybe more money than I'm going to have at the moment. But we'll see how YouTube goes as far as money for fabric. I've got, <coughs> sorry, I've got um decided this morning I'm going to do another tiny house quilt but this is once again it's a Missouri Star Quilt Company design that Jenny Doan did probably a couple of years ago now um, and it's called I don't know if it's called Penny Lane or Jenny Lane but anyhow it's the tiny quilt tiny house quilt on steroids there's two-story houses there's trees single story houses um i'll put a link up to it when i actually go to start doing it that's another one that'll need a chunk of fabric but i'd like to get that one done this year it's going to be all machine sewn so it'll be something different again i haven't done machine sewing since the tiny house quilt so i'll get that one done that's the only as if i don't have enough quilts planned that's the only other quilt other than these two underwater ones and to get that big green one actually quilted so i think that's it for this month's update next month's one i'll be able to tell you whether i got everything for hospital how i went in at least a couple of my assignments and what the progress has been over over april which is going to be studying and quilting as per usual I don't have a social life but thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one